I tell you what was probably the worst. But I got popular, but I still didn't have money. I got popular. People used to take pictures and stuff, but I still didn't have money, right? Because the whole ecosystem of say social media owning or like whatever brands, brands and stuff. I remember the first brand I quoted three lakhs for a video, and we mutually agreed for eight thousand. Today uh, here with me is uh, Nikunj Lotia, also known, of course, very popularly as uh, BU Nick. Now he's a content creator, he's an influencer, he's an entrepreneur. We're going to be talking about different things to him today. Uh, so uh, Nick, first of all, uh, welcome to our series Candid Conversations. And um, to begin with, I'm going to talk about the content part of it later. What I want to start off with is. Uh, you're involved in this in this website, this apparel website. I just checked it out. Called this is kra dot com. Have I pronounced it correctly? So yeah, what is it's called you, kra? Kra. Yeah. Okay. So what is what is that all about? How did you get involved in it? So uh, kra, I got involved because I wanted to do something on a clothing line, and uh, I've been getting a lot of opportunities since like I don't know if you guys know. I've been doing this since probably forever now. Probably nine years of like uh, making content. So in the first or the second year, we started got uh, like getting uh, people coming and telling us to do merch and stuff like that. But I always wanted to uh, make my own line. So that's when the idea of Kra came, and that's how we started. And uh, yeah, I mean that's that was the idea. I love doing a lot. I I, I mean I love businesses. I love doing a lot of businesses. It's just I feel like. I feel like I'm starting from from zero when I start something. It's like I feel like how I started being unique nine years ago. I get the same feeling if I start any business. And uh, yeah, our clothing line was like on the mind since the beginning. And you know, I went to the website, going through the different products and all. I mean, uh, obviously, the since it's your line, it's sort of designed on uh, the kind of uh, mm, the kind of style which I have seen you uh, uh, adopting uh, like over the last few years the, the the style you have a very sort of a, a gangster style you know gangster cool sort of a style that's the kind of range which you are basically producing yeah it's uh, it's actually streetwear to be honest and uh, i remember growing up i like i have a very reactive history right so i didn't have enough money to like buy good brands back then so i always used to style myself differently so i used to like style myself the baggy with baggy pants or like A full sleeve T shirt on top of it, like a T shirt. Like I don't know why I used to do that. I <laughs> I thought it was cool back then, but anything that I liked back then, or anything that I thought that I would want to like or want to buy, I wouldn't or I couldn't because I didn't have enough money to do it. And that's why the idea, like the whole cool gangster vibe, within like it's not very expensive to within range was the idea when we like you know started making kra, and that's what we represent. and yeah that's how it, that's how it started that's how it works out okay okay uh, moving on to this other other venture which is there you started a food truck called the feast india company in sunnyvale california usa i don't even know i've never even seen sunnyvale ever on on the map but how did this come about sunnyvale is the, uh, apparently way bigger than i thought it was because uh, a lot of big companies are there like facebook's offices are around like google's offices are around and uh, so i'd gone to visit uh, san francisco there was a brand called visit visit usa but the whole uh, i had to make few videos youtube videos back then the whole idea was to promote uh, us tourism in india and that's why they had sent us me and like to shore from you and we traveled a lot of uh, cities in fra like in the us we went to lake tahoe we went to san francisco and what happens is like back then when i used to go at any city i used to tell whoever like the people who are like watching my videos around that city to come and meet me like like a small meet up and every time that i go to a city there were like a lot of people who used to come and then i used to like pick a few who i think are like street smart enough to like show me few places around so eventually ashreyas <clears throat> was the guy uh, who i met who i thought like can show me around like really well then i was discussing his life he like i'm a chef you know this he's on ambitions or like what are you planning to do he said that i was thinking of opening a food truck i'm like ah that's interesting 
and that's how the idea came and then uh, he was about to start like an indo indo chinese food truck but when i when we went there and we realized that there are a lot of indian food trucks around and they're doing well but everybody served meal like everybody who was serving was serving a full fledged meal like roti sabji or pav bhaji which takes 45 minutes to make and i realized i've traveled across the world i i've traveled a lot uh, recently and i've realized that you have a lot of south indian and north indian food everywhere but not enough maharashtrian food so the idea was to like make very quick food like vada pav or misal pav which is like easy to make so when somebody comes there and orders a meal by waiting for 45 minutes he would probably have to vada pav from our truck that was the idea and that's how it started and that's like kind of blew up uh, we opened one more last week so now we have like four food trucks in san francisco wow uh, two of them are called fish in the company uh, and the other two are called uh, one bite stand one bite stand later yeah, on one bite stand vada pav or uh, ah no that i got vada pav <laughs> or uh, the thing missile pav become famous in the us and all so then sort of you'll be you'll be given credit for that obviously yes uh, so honestly i'm not even joking like uh, not not saying it because i own it but across the country like everywhere i've gone the the euro europe tokyo whatever us I don't think I've had a better vada pav outside India than the one that we saw at least in the company. You tried once. Whenever you go there, it's on the house. Normally, yeah, okay, I normally I normally I travel to Ghatkopar, not to the US. So <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, I mean I'm, I'm sure we will be in touch for the vada pav. Hundred percent. So now moving moving on from your you know entrepreneurship ventures now. you know someone let's say someone logs on to your instagram today they they see your instagram profile okay first thing which is going to happen is obviously they will feel jealous because you've got 2 million followers you're hanging out with all these celebrities you've got a very cool lifestyle what i want to talk about is what some people may not know when immediately when they go to your instagram profile because you've had a very uh, you had a very uh, interesting uh, uh, back story you worked at a cyber cafe you worked as a bartender you were living in kolaba which is of course uh the the cream de la cream. i don't con- i don't even consider that living because i i was i lived there only for a year like the first year of my life so i don't oh, like so you remember the first year of life i was just born there yeah ah, okay okay so and then uh, uh, i i believe you had to shift dombivili because of some uh, financial conditions and so how will take me to that phase of you know why you had to work through in a cyber cafe and a bartender and how did you become financially secure again take me through that journey really I started working and providing for my family since I was like I, I guess fourteen or fifteen, and uh, me and my brother. My brother, in fact, had to leave his education so that he could work, and he could like uh, provide for the family. And uh, so we had like we lived like a very because I don't know. So I've heard like we were very comfortable when we were in Kolaba. We had like uh, my dad had like a big business, and my apparently when I meet my dad's friend. all the stories that he talks about that is exactly what i do right now like i live with my friends i live like an if you've seen ontraj i live like winnie from ontraj i take around like everybody like i take care of everyone like even if i go to us i take like for my friends so apparently my dad also did that and didn't like save enough so during the crisis what happened was uh, uh we had to move you because of some financial conditions and like the business was not doing well and, and obviously like kolaba's business if you do it in dumbivli it's not going to like work So it all got like shattered, and we we lost the house and like everything. And then like my and my mom started like w- working. My dad retired, got retired like fifteen years ago, and he couldn't. The guy who's done business all his life couldn't do job, and, and he didn't try to do it too. Then we had like a very like from where I remember because that's whenever I even from where I remember, I never had like a comfortable life. We always had yeah. Like, obviously, you said you were one year old, so how will you? Yeah. yeah. So it's just like everything like fell apart and like. We had this life where majority of my life I spent in trains. Like, so I'll I'll give you a, from my college life. Majority of my life I spent in trains. I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you the route. I'll tell you the college life that I spent. So I was a bartender. Okay, I did a so I did a hotel management course, taking loan. I did bartending course where I started the course. I didn't pay any money, but I in the first or the second day I started working for them. We used to give me like. Initially, one hundred fifty bucks a night, and then like three hundred fifty bucks a night, serving like as a bartender. So I used to earn that three hundred fifty bucks a night. So now I live at Dumbivli. I used to catch a train to 
uh, CST because my college was there, JJ. From there, I used to go to Khar, which is like your uh, Western line. Mm. I used to go to Khar, then I used to go to classes, and then wherever they used to send me for an event, like for the night. Then we used to like pray that we get the last train back, or else we sleep at Dad uh, at Bandra or Dadar station, uh, major majorly Dadar station because you can get from Bandra to Dadar to Miljada. Uh, sleep at Dadar station and get up by four, go back home. And go to the college because the college was at seven a.m. So whatever sleeping was happening was inside the train or at the station. And I don't know how to tell you, but it's fun when you have friends around because you don't feel like you're just chilling. But if you're alone, uh, trying to sleep at a station, if you ever tried this, it feels like you'll sleep and you're tired because I've done so much traveling and work, at least like eight hours of work. Your body's tired. You feel that you sleep, you'll get up. It'll, It'll be four o'clock. You'll sleep at like one thirty-two. You'll get out. It'll be four o'clock, and then you leave. You sleep the best sleep that you ever had in your life. You get up. It's only fifteen minutes. <laughs> then you try to sleep. You get up. It's only ten minutes. So that's two hours when you're trying to sleep alone in the station. It doesn't go well. Yeah. So then, but that was the life that I lived uh, when I was a bartender, which was like majority of my time. And uh, your age at that time was what around nineteen, twenty, or something. Yeah, yeah, eighteen, nineteen, like the, probably that age. And what I did, did that for like six, good six, seven years. And when did things sort of uh, start to change for you for the better? Then I started working. I I was in Goa for a year where I was a wedding planner. Then, uh, then I started working in call centers, you know, probably for like two, three years, which was like a little decent because with. Bartending is again freelancing, right? Because I used to work behind bar, and behind bar, if you work, you don't get like enough money. I don't think people still do, but uh, the money that you earn, you get it like it's like a freelance thing. Like you just have to keep asking for the money that you earn. You know, you know, you get that if you ever worked as a freelancer, you just have to like yeah, keep yeah. asking when are you gonna get the money, and it's just like you can't like plan your life well. Uh, but at call center, we got like we at least know that okay, yeah, for the first or fifth of the month, we're gonna get the money. So then it got a little okay, but my life got well only after Bionic. Nothing before that. Like I paid off the loan only through my Bionic money, my college loan, and whatever like kharcha we had on the family and like me and everything was all through Bionic. So that must have been when you're around what twenty six, twenty seven types maybe approx. Yeah, twenty seven. Yeah, twenty seven. Okay. Yeah. You know you mentioned uh, while while you were talking, you actually mentioned. Uh, Something which people normally say in conversation: if you've ever done this, or if you've ever slept at a railway station. But that's the thing, you know. I mean, most of the people uh, probably watching this, or most of the influencers also, this is something which which sort of uh, sets you apart from a lot of the other influencers, right? I'm, I mean, the content part with celebrities and the comedy content, etc., all that is there. But I think this is one differentiating factor which is there. No, I think, uh, and that's what I. Like I kind of train a lot of new people and like I try to guide them through. But the one thing that I say is like I feel, uh, whoever started working on what we are doing right now during that age, did it for passion because we never knew that we we're gonna earn through this, and that's why we are still relevant. Like I can, off the head, I can imagine people like Boo and Ashish. I think we all started when we never knew that anything's gonna happen. Like like you know it's gonna blow up or like it's gonna give you money. So the whole, I keep asking all these people that if you if you had like a hundred thousand or whatever like a hundred million in your account, would you still keep doing what you're doing? Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what I'll do right now, even if I have that money, that much money. And so it's, your why should be very, why you're doing this should be very prominent. I normally cut off the interview at fifteen minutes because apparently Instagram is not allowing us to post more than fifteen minutes. But I'll still ask this last question. And for the ones who can't see the entire interview, you can also uh, uh, go on to our YouTube or uh, Facebook channels and uh, watch it if the last minute or so gets cut off. See, you you've told me about your uh, uh, you know you uh, your phase as a bartender, working in a call center, etc. When you started making videos, okay, talking just about that phase, how uh, just that particular phase, how easy or difficult was it for you to become very popular? Like if somebody says that, oh, you know. Uh, you Nick to matlab, started making videos and they started going viral. So it was a very easy process. Uh, so what was it? Easy, difficult? That exactly. That's, know, what, that's the reason I'm asking. See, you. 
see uh, definitely i got the first move advantage no doubt about that but uh, i think i'll tell you when i said i used to live in the station which is still fine because you know that you didn't have money i tell you what was probably the worst but i got popular but i still didn't have money i got popular people used to take pictures and stuff but i still didn't have money right because the whole ecosystem of say social media owning or like whatever brands brands and stuff i remember the first brand i quoted 3 lakhs for a video and we mutually agreed for 8000 that was the first brand that we did so we didn't have money back then and i remember going back and doing bartending now same as like i had to earn right so i'm like i'm again behind the bar right now but at least i know what i want to do in life but i'm again behind the bar serving alcohol they were like hey man you should find another bachcha like yeah but how much how many ice do you need in the drink like it's that it was that yeah obviously because that. yeah because if the owner sees you know ye to sirf photos or selfies khincha raha hai ha he probably tell you no, ki yaar it's and it's just very irritating i don't know how to say this because i'm not saying i love bartending dude i can do it right now it's not not a big deal but i'm just saying that if you know what you want to do in life you can't do anything else like i i promised myself when i was 25 that i was never going to work for anybody else again everything worked out well like i mean that seemed to like like everything i got like a little bonus from call center and like i saved up and i paid it to the home and i told them don't ask money for the next 3 months because i paid enough for the 3 months then it got over then i took uh, like money from a friend gave it to home i was like please one more month like everything was fucked like i I didn't have enough friends left. Like ask money for then I went. I even interviewed at a call center. I now like killing myself to do that. I got the job. I went there in the first two hours. I left. I like I just can't do it. I just like I don't know how to tell you this, but you know that you want what you want to do. And you are not able to do it. Just can't do it. And the same week, Mocha Mocha happened. My first viral video. Twenty fifteen, na? No? Yeah, the same week it happened. Like you know, imagine the whole. It's you know, it's the the saying is really right. When you're like pushed back a lot, that when you bounce. You just have to like hold a little bit longer, hold a little bit longer. Wow, that's a uh, quite an amazing story. I mean, pitching three lakhs and then eight <laughs> thousand. We don't know what was the whole business about, right? Like, we don't know what is influencer marketing. We got that. There was no Amazon Prime, nothing at that time, N- nothing related to like influencers. The term was influencer wasn't there. We were an artist back then. Anything that we thought we were like, I just like, I think at three lakh to go, dude. That guy got like the video has five million views. He got it for like eight thousand rupees. Imagine that, and five million pre geo views. I'm talking about that time. We just couldn't do anything, and like that eight thousand was also like, ah, thoda time to nikal jayega for us. Wow, wow. Uh, so you know, that was that was our conversation with Bu Nick. Uh, what an what an amazing guy. Thank you so much, Nick. Uh, for talking to us, thank you for calling we'll, me. We'll be in touch for other video video interviews and uh, take care. Hundred percent. Thank you. Take care.